goes into your boil pot from your spar to your uh, out of your louder tut into your boil pot, uh, you end up with seven gallons, seven and a half gallons. Um, you lose a little on each time you transfer this stuff if you're being careful. So I'm looking at probably more like four gallons here. Uh, something that if I'm lucky will get me 30 to 35 12 ounce bottles. Rarely do I bottle 12 ounce, all 12 ounces though. I usually do a few big ones that I take to my brew club with me. Um, I'm going to tip it a little, just a little. I'm going to watch that trub though. I don't want that getting up into my siphon. Every Every 15 seconds that I get up, this thing running is one bottle of beer, so I don't want to leave any more than I have to either. So far, so good. I'll be able to abbreviate the bottling process. I'll, just, if you, I'll show you one bottle, and if you've seen one, you've seen a hundred. All right, I'm going to start sucking air here in a second. And I'll stop as soon as that starts. We don't want to pour bubbles down into that. A little forgiving. You can get a few bubbles and not ruin the batch. There we go. That's enough. Take it out of there. Transfer complete. So we have a bottling bucket now up on the higher elevation. A smart brewer would have drawn off a sample to test final gravity before he put his priming sugar in. But that would be a smart brewer. So now I'm going to check my terminal gravity but it's going to be a little off because I got sugar in there again. You can see a little bit ahead. Sometimes the airlock freezes and stops up and you can carbonate your beer a bit too, even during the cold conditioning. Um, and you get a feel for the color there too. It's actually a very nice color. It's like, uh, it is a gold color. So it looks good. They make a fine, fine color. So you get a clarity on that too. I put a, f a uh, towel on the floor too. You're going to get a little on the floor, and I don't want my wife, brow beater, to come after me when she steps on a sticky spot or finds a colony of ants going to work on it. Last but not least, bottle caps, bottles. I got about 50 there. I only need about 30 for this, but you don't want to run short. So, best thing for bottles need to be sanitized, cleaning. The job's made a lot easier if you just clean as you go. These are old bottles along the way that I've delabeled, and it's a pain in the neck to do that. So when I finish a beer, I see to it, whether it's me or my friends, to get a little warm water in there and rinse it out real good and set it aside. Um, makes the cleaning job easier if you don't have to power wash crud off the bottom of a bottle. And uh, same with the caps. They need to be disinfected. Even though they probably won't come in contact with the beer, you still, I, I disinfect those. Okay, so the process goes basically like this. You turn the valve and you, you let your uh, So the process begins basically like this. You turn your spigot on and until you drop this plunger, nothing's going to happen. So I start in here because you're going to get a bunch of air. Bleed it all out. Looking good. Not more than you need to. Now you go to your first bottle. Push. Things start to flow. I take it to the point that it wants to actually almost overflow. You're going to get ahead on this again. And I'm going to let that. And then you move it. 
you do the same thing. So you can see there why we put a towel down. Wow, this beer actually was carbonating in that. This Kolsch yeast is pretty amazing stuff. It really likes low temperatures. Any other yeast that would have shut down fermentation, we actually got down to about 58. That's the process. We'll cap them here in a minute when I get all these done. So there you have it. About 36 bottles. And that's about par. It's actually a good yield for me. Got some fruit back there. You gotta watch that. You don't want any wild yeast finding its way into your bottles. Probably should have shouldn't have put these here, but it helps for filming. This little job is a bottle capper. And uh you need one of those as well. That's a final piece of equipment. So let's put let's uh cap a couple bottles so you see how that goes and uh then uh, we'll be done. Quite simple. Put a cap on, set your crimper over the top of it. Squeeze. You don't want to squeeze like Magilla Gorilla, just till it meets good firm resistance. You can crush the end of the bottle if you squeeze too hard, then you got to free it up. One done. Two weeks, that'll be ready to go. Same thing. Alright? 34 more times, and I'm all done. And there we are. About an hour's job, all said and done. Uh, I keep some of them aside and I mark them specifically. Uh, we got a few homebrew competitions and if these turn out to taste pretty good, uh, I'll keep those and submit those. I usually want two bottles, about like that. And they don't want any outside labels on them, so if you go fancy and buy labels for yourself. And you want to enter a competition, don't stick them to the bottle, you just have to take them back off. And um, if you brew a lot of them, you're going to just put a magic marker and just kind of your own designation as to what you got. So anyways, these go downstairs now. I'll leave them alone for a few weeks and see how they taste at the end of the month. So that's all for bottling. See you next time.